Hello. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, Simon. Hello, Bruce. How are we today? We? Well, I can't speak on behalf of both of us, but I'm okay, thank you. How are you? I'm absolutely fabulous, thank you very much. That's very good. So, um, what are we doing here, Bruce? Well, we're doing a thing called Factorally. Tell me about that. Factorially is a... Well, you know it's a podcast because you've got it on your podcast player, haven't you, people? Of course, everyone has. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, but it specifically talks about facts... Ah. And not the kind of facts that are particularly useful. <laughs> how to how to cook an egg? Or... Well, I don't know. They do come in handy, though, because especially if there's a lull in the conversation hmm. and you go, did you know that Vikings dyed their hair? <gasps> really? No, I didn't know that. What an interesting conversation I know. It's starter. A good, it's a good conversation yeah. starter. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yes. Any point at any day, you can just go, I heard a thing the other day. Yes. And if you're mixing with the right people, they'll say, oh, yeah, I heard that thing yes. as well. So we get together, we pick a topic each week, we find out some interesting, useless facts, we come together and we chat about them. And That's you, right. all you lovely listeners, you get to, to hear us do so. So what is the subject, Simon? The subject that we're talking about this time, Bruce, is Lego. Lego, or Legos, as the Americans wrongly call it. They do, don't they? Yes. yes, they refer to an individual Lego brick as a Lego, and therefore a collection of them as some Legos. Yes. Um... I find this most disturbing. I, I do as like well, it. but that's because I, I count sheeps at night. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's not, let's not go there. Crikey. <laughs> Be telling me you eat shrimps next. I know. It's awful, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> so Lego, wonderful stuff. It is, isn't it? What, what are your personal feelings on Lego? Do you have a, a particular history well, with the stuff? Well, you see, I wasn't brought up on Lego. Hmm. I, I, I was brought up on something a bit more sort of industrial. Meccano? Yes. So was I. <laughs> there you go. I, f I, f I find Meccano much more like engineering-based. Yes. Whereas Lego is a bit more toy-based. Yes. Okay. I think we've just opened ourselves up to the possibility of doing an episode on, on Meccano. <laughs> <laughs> we could do, actually. But, but I, I, I love Meccano. It's great. But Lego, I, I, I know that if you step on it, it really hurts. <laughs> yes, that's the one famous thing about Lego, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a torture implement laid down on the floor by children, yes. their parents. <laughs> yeah, and I know it's not Danish. <gasps> Is it not? No, it isn't. It's English. Hooray! Good for us. Well done, us. <laughs> well, the word Lego is is we'll come to in a minute, hmm. but but there was a a, a, a chap called Hilary Fisher Page, okay, back in uh, 1936. Right. Who invented a thing called Briplax, which were self-locking bricks that look pretty much the same as Lego. Oh, okay. Um, it was made by a company called Kiddycraft. Right. And you know how we had an episode on Vikings, where we talked about the Vikings coming to, to Britain yes. and pillaging? Pillaging all the way. So the Danes may... It's actually most likely that they did, uh, that the chap who invented Lego um, nicked it from Hilary Fisher Page's Briplax. Right. Now, I've got a little step further than that. You're absolutely right. In fact, uh, this, this gentleman, Hilary Fisher-Page, he actually presented these bricks to the Lego company, who were already established. They made wooden toys. They were yeah. just beginning to experiment with plastic. Um, and this, this fella said, look, we've been making these bricks. They're OK. We're not, we haven't had a massive success with them. Here, have a few. See what you think. And the, the people at Lego said, well, yeah, do you know what? We reckon we can do something with that. We, we can change it slightly. We can market it a bit better. Um, can we buy the rights from you? And Kitty Craft went, yeah, all right. We're not really doing anything with it. Here you go. <laughs> so it was, it was an actual transaction that the Brits gave away um, the design for these interlocking bricks to Danish company Lego. And the rest is history. <laughs> The history of Lego is, is quite fascinating. I'll give you a very potted version, but if anyone wants to go on to um, lego.com and search the history archives, they have a, an entire <laughs> history of the whole of Lego. It's fascinating. I've spent a really long time reading it. It's brilliant. Um, the company Lego was founded in 1932 by Ole Kirk Christiansen, who uh, lived in, in Denmark. And um, the company was an, originally called Leg Gott. Hmm. which is Danish for play well, because this fellow was really interested in children playing and learning and having a good time and a good quality of life. 
Um, leg got was eventually shortened into Lego because it's it's just nicer. Um, but they made wooden toys and things. Uh, Christensen was a, a carpenter, and he made household products, but then he also sort of started making toys. He wasn't very well off, was he? He was from quite a poor background. Yeah, yeah, he had to borrow quite a bit of money from, from family and friends in order to get the company off the ground. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, very, very poor background. Um, he left school at 14. Hmm. And um, trained as a carpenter, he basically couldn't find work where he was in, in Denmark and, and went to Germany to become a carpenter. Oh, I see. I didn't read that bit. Then when he was a successful carpenter, then he went back to Denmark. Ah. Um, but the, this fellow was, was really insistent on, on high quality. You know, he really wanted these toys to be, to be good quality. Yeah. Um, back in the mid-30s, Lego had a, a motto, which I associate with an entirely different product. And the motto was, only the best is good enough. Oh. Which I recognise as being a line from the Milky Bar Kid yes. song. Yes. Um, but apparently that was, an, that was originally Lego's motto, only the best is good enough. enough. Isn't that great? Interesting. The Lego bricks are on me. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> um, and to that, that, that high standard of quality, um, his son Gottfried uh, Christensen, who worked in the company, uh, came up with an idea of, of, of saving the company money by only using two coats of varnish instead of three on their painted wooden ducks. <laughs> and his father said, how dare you? We, we can't be skimping on quality. Quality is the most important thing. You go away and apply the third coat of varnish to every single one of our painted wooden ducks yourself, <laughs> my son, um, and learn your lesson. I think that's wonderful. That's great. <laughs> So that was all going on in the 30s. They didn't start experimenting with using plastic for toys until 1947. So a couple of years after the Second World War, obviously that's that's when the stuff sort of yes. became more readily available. Yeah. And they just made average everyday toys out of plastic until this event happened in, in 1949 with the chap you just mentioned. Hilary Page. That's the one. And um, they redesigned it a bit, made it a bit better, and named it the Automatic Binding Brick. Which is so catchy. ABB, yes. Automatic binding construction might have been better because then it could have been the ABC. See, what they needed, Bruce, was a, a wonderful, world-renowned marketing man like yourself on the team. <laughs> Copywriter, if you don't mind. Marketing is much too difficult for a, for a simple, simple chap like me. Fair enough. It's interesting you talk about the um, only the best is good enough. Mm. There's a fanaticism within Lego for perfection. Yeah. And apparently the, the, the tolerance for the Lego bricks mm. is 0.002 millimetres. Oh, my goodness. So if anything is greater than two thousandths of a millimetre, oh. uh, then it's, it just gets rejected. But it's, it stood them in good stead because if you buy a, a, a box of Lego now mm. – and you've got an old box from your, well, from my childhood, for example, from mm. 1958. Mm. You will find that the 1958 Lego still works with 2024 Lego. Oh, really? They're compatible? Yeah. yeah. How wonderful. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's how intolerant they are of yeah. poor tolerance. That's incredible. Wow. <laughs> So my first um, introduction to Lego was sort of in the, the early 80s. And um, it was in 1978 that Lego started first doing sets, per se. Okay. Up until then, it was all very brick and plate stuff. You know, build something out of your own imagination. Um, and then in, in 1978, they started doing themes. And they brought out uh, the Lego Castle, Lego Town, and Lego Space sets. Ah. And that is pretty much what informed my entire childhood. I <laughs> still have bags and bags and bags of Lego in the loft. And I have these pieces of castle. I have these little Lego men holding a, a sword and a shield. I have little Lego horses. I have little Lego astronauts, all hailing from the, the late 70s, early 80s. Wow. I mean, you talk about um, holding a sword. Hmm. Um, one of Lego's um, very important principles is that they do not make modern warfare weapons oh really uh, they'll make things like you know lasers and stuff for, for the star wars set, you know for the space yeah. sets and they'll make swords and stuff yes 
for a tiny little amount of time, and they're quite rare now, um, they, after the Second World War, they did make um, little minifigures holding uh, rifles. Yeah. And then they just stopped doing it. And, they, and th- their principle is that they will never make a modern weapon of warfare. That's fantastic. What a great philosophy to have. Which means, I guess, if, if you're the kind of person who doesn't like that sort of bellicose uh, attitude, mm. that you can happily let your children play with Lego. Yes. And knowing that they're not getting influenced by anything other than wanting to go into space or build castles. <laughs> Oh, how wonderful. I hadn't really thought about it, but you're right. Lego does have a rather wholesome ideology to it, doesn't it? It's sort of... You know, Very much. You, you yeah. build parks and towns and scenes from daily life or, you know, exploration. And yes, they have wonderful nature sets and safari sets and sports cars, things like that. You know, it's all, it's all yes. fairly harmless, isn't it? It's delightful. But did they just sell sets of Lego or did you actually have to buy something which made a a castle or a racetrack or a train or something? So you can, at the very basic level, there are plates and bricks and dots and construction pieces. Right. And from that, you can build anything that your imagination can think of building. Okay. Um, which wasn't great for me because I don't have a terribly good imagination. I follow instructions very, very well, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> so having a set with a picture on it saying, this is what you're going to end up with, and here are very clear and concise instructions as to how you're going to end up there. Yeah. That was my kind of Lego. I have wonderful friends who hate my experience of Lego because they are all about creating something out of nothing from your imagination. Yeah. So there are are very, very different camps of of Lego users. Um, But you you talked about sort of the the fanaticism of, of, of quality and precision. There is a major, major fanaticism amongst Lego fans. There are people who spend thousands and thousands of pounds a year on the latest sets because they're not cheap, some of them. Yes. Um, Well, especially since they got involved with Lucasfilm. They do do quite a lot of Star Wars sets, don't they now? (laughs) Well, it was their very first, um, the first licensing that oh. Lego did was with was with um, Lucas. Oh, really? Is that right? Yeah, so so um, the, the, their relationship with um, Star Wars goes back to 1999. Okay. When they brought up the oh, first Star the, Wars the re- set. remastering era, wasn't it, I guess? Yes. Yeah, and, and uh, what happened was um, in order to make video games, they, they, they then licensed to a video game company. Yes. And then, weirdly, the, the video game company was bought by a film company. Right, okay. Who then purely bought the, the video game company so they could make Lego films. Oh, my goodness. How convoluted. Do you know what? I hadn't even thought about the Lego video games. I love the, the Lego Star Wars games and Lego Batman and all of that sort of stuff. I hadn't even yes. thought about researching those. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Lego and Star Wars, I decided to have a look at what are the highest selling, the most popular Lego sets and um, I found a, a website, which is um, a rather fun place, Brickopedia. Of course you did. <laughs> yes, th- th- there's lots of uh, brick-based stuff, isn't there? There's Brick World Chicago, which is the world's biggest Lego convention. And yeah. There's Bricktastic in London and Brickfest <laughs> and all sorts. The, 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 the word brick seems to be an easy substitute for the word Lego. Yes, it, it does seem to be quite um, ubiquitous, ah, doesn't it? Simon. Oh, sorry. Um <laughs> Yes, and, and, and Brickopedia, if you have the time, I, I tell you what, if, uh, if, if we put some links up onto the blog section of the wonderful factorally.com website, you'll find links to, to these various websites. Brickopedia is a dream. Yes. It catalogues so many different types of bricks and varieties and colours and shapes and sizes. Anyway, um, I found the top 10 highest selling Lego sets of 2023 last year. Okay. And uh, out of the top 10, seven of them were Star Wars themed. Wow. Um, there were also two racing cars and one Simpsons house. <laughs> so it's properly synergistic with that. Though. Yeah, absolutely. And um, some of the Star Wars sets also constitute the most expensive Lego sets that you can buy. I went on to the Lego online store and uh, the two most expensive Lego sets at, at present are exactly the same price. The Millennium Falcon Mm -hmm. and the Atat Walker from Star Wars both currently cost £734.99. What? I've got a friend who's got those. 
Have you? I didn't realise he was spending that much money on his child. <laughs> on his child. He's spending it on himself. Come on. <laughs> um, they're big and they're impressive and they're going to provide you with hours and hours and hours of, of construction entertainment and then you get to have the thing sitting on a mantelpiece gathering dust. What could be yes, better, Bruce? Exactly. <laughs> Now, I know you like a quiz. Oh, I do love a quiz. How many combinations do you think you can make with just eight Lego bricks? Uh, I would say it depends on the bricks in question. Are we talking about a two by two or a four by okay. two a, or a, a one by oh, six? OK, so I w- like the standard Lego brick, whatever that is. Uh, it's probably two by three is the most. Yes. Gosh, I'm getting nerdy now. Um, I'm going to say... Guess a number and I'll tell you whether it's high or lower. I'm going to say 75 combinations. Keep going. <laughs> I mean, think of a ridiculous number. Okay, 5,000. No, no, more ridiculous. Really? 100,000. Much, much, much more ridiculous. A million? Even more ridiculous. Uh, just give me the answer. 950 million combinations. No. <laughs> Not all, what? From eight N- Lego bricks. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I suppose, yeah, okay. That's a lot of combinations. Now, actually... I may be wrong. Mm. I don't think I am. But if I am, you can tell us. How can they tell us? Well, you you can comment. Mm -hmm. When you leave your five-star review, which we know you will. Obviously. um, Then just leave a comment saying, actually, I think you'll find that (laughs) you were way out with the 950 million. It's more like seven. Yes. And and you will have just used one of our favourite phrases as well. Actually, I think you'll find. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) So what other interesting things have you got to tell us about Lego, Bruce? So many things. (laughs) They are the largest producers of tyres on Earth. I beg your pardon? So you know those little tyres, those little wheels and tyres you get in Lego? So they make 360 million of those every year. (laughs) (laughs) For the listeners who can't see, I just took a swig of coffee and I very nearly spat that all over my screen. What? 360 million tyres and wheels a year. That's a lot, isn't it? (laughs) That's more than every single other tyre manufacturer combined. <laughs> That's a stunning fact. Yeah. Isn't that cracking? It's really good. And they are legitimately tyres, aren't they? They, they, are, they are circular rings of rubber that you put around a yeah. wheel hub. Absolutely. They are yeah. tyres. They are tyres. No question. That's awesome. Would you like your own uh, Lego set? Oh, I'd love one. Yes, please. Well, you can have it. All you have to do is come up with an idea for, for, for a Lego set yeah, and find 9,999 other people who also think it's a good idea. Right. So 10,000 people. Submit your idea to Lego. Yeah. And they will consider it as something that they can make in the future. Isn't that good? That's cool. So if you've got a passion and you really want your own Lego set, just find 10,000 other people who agree with you. Well, there's you and me straight away, so <laughs> all we, we only need another 9,998. What should, we, what should we create, Bruce? I don't know. I, I th- but I think the best, the best day to, to submit this to, to Lego would be uh, January the 28th. Oh, is that International Lego Day? It is International Lego Day. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> the amount of ridiculous, silly things that I found out about there was a, a tortoise that had an accident right, and lost both its uh, back legs. Aww. And so the vets went, mm, how are we going to sort this out? So basically, he puts a Lego set and some wheels on the back of this tortoise. Wonderful. And now it's happily, well, it was certainly at the time, happily wandering around on its two front legs and wheels at the back. Brilliant. I can go one better than that. Go on. There's a, a chap called David Aguilla who built himself a working prosthetic arm. Out of Lego. Wow. So he was a, he was a boy who, who was very prolific at, at using Lego. Um, he was born with one, one forearm missing. And he built an actual working prosthetic arm out of Lego when he was nine years old. Goodness. Um, he's given himself the nickname Hand Solo, <laughs> which I love. Um, and he, he now... I can't remember how long ago that was, but he's he's now a bit older, and uh, he makes prosthetic limbs for for people who who can't afford them. Isn't that great? What a great story! That's fantastic. 
the uh, the minifigures are, are are taking over the world. Yes, they are. Um, they are. There, there are something like four billion uh, minifigures in the world, which is twice the population of China. Goodness me! <laughs> so, it is the world's technically the world's largest population? <laughs> so, four billion minifigures. So that's that's sort of everything from the the, the standard little yellow fella. Yes. All the way through to themed characters from the Star Wars sets and the Harry Potter sets exactly. and so on and so on. Yes. Wow. Yes. There are currently 400 billion individual pieces of Lego on planet Earth. <laughs> 400 billion. So that's everything Gosh. from the, the bricks and the plates through to the figures. That, through to That's about 80 bricks for every man, woman and child on the planet. That's very, very good maths, Bruce. Well done. I was just about to say, <laughs> if you were to split that number evenly across the entire population of the planet, <laughs> we'd, all, we'd all get just over 50 pieces per person. Oh, is it yeah. 50? Oh, pretty close. Fair enough. Um, Not far off. There are a total of around, I mean, this keeps changing because they keep on bringing out new sets that have pieces that are specific to that set. But at the time of recording... There are around 3,764 unique Lego elements. Wow. Which doesn't really sound that lot, but I would imagine if you put them all together, that would look like quite a lot of Lego. It would. I found a list of the most commonly used and frequently produced individual Lego pieces, and they actually list them in order of of popularity and... um, a frequency of recurrence within sets. Uh, the top five most used Lego pieces are... At five. <laughs> at five. And they all have names, which is wonderful. At five, brick one by one. At four, brick one by two. At three, connector peg with friction. At two, round plate one by one. And the most popular, most frequently used piece of Lego is plate one by two. Wow. Wow. Fascinating, and I can picture exactly what all of those things. That's impressive are. that you can that you can do that. It's not bad, is it? <laughs> when I when I do Lego with my son, we've formed this wonderful habit of uh, reading each other a page of instructions whilst the other person does the build, but without seeing the instructions. So we we try to narrate it. Okay. We try to see if the other person can get what we're saying. Oh, that's cool. So we sort of say. Take a light blue 2x4 plate and stick it underneath a dark green 1x3 brick. No, not there. There. No, no, not there. There. Yes, that's it. And that's how we build Lego together. It's great fun. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Canterbury University um, did, did some research into the faces of uh, minifigures. The faces of minifigures. The faces okay. of minifigures. And, right. and, and they've, they, they basically did some research using 628 minifigures from the 1990s up to today. Yeah. And they've worked out that they're getting angrier. <laughs> <laughs> right. So out of the 628, originally there, there, there was something like 40 or 50 angry faces. But today it's up to like 192 so out of the 628, mm. this research group felt that 324 were happy faces. Okay. Um, 49 of them they felt were sad. Oh. 28 of them they felt expressed disgust. <laughs> um, 11 expressed fear. 23 expressed surprise. But 192 expressed anger. Wow. They looked angry. That's some angry Lego, isn't it? Yeah. And I suppose given the, the context of, of what we've been talking about, how... Lego have branched out into movies and pop culture and things like that. If you're if you're going to make a, I don't know, let's say a Lord of the Rings Lego set. Yes, Lego Lass. Lego Lass. <laughs> oh, why didn't I think of that? That was brilliant. <laughs> Sorry, it just came to me. That's wonderful. Um, other than Lego Lass, so Lego Lass is going to have a, a look of. Slight concern and consternation upon his face. Yes. There are going to be bad guys in there who have angry faces because that's what bad guys look like. Yes. So that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I guess. The fans are crazy. I mean, I mean, fan is short for fanatic. Yes. <laughs> and they are quite fanatical. It really does, does apply here, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. People have done some extraordinary builds over the years. What, what have you heard that people have done? So this this kind of overlaps onto a regular feature here on Fact Orally, the Guinness World Records. Um, there's sort of an overlap. You can't really talk about how incredible some of these builds are without saying, this guy made the world's biggest 
whatever it is. Yes. Um, so there are a lot of these things. There's a, a chap in America who made the world's largest Lego skeleton. He made a, a T-Rex containing 80,000 pieces of Lego. Wow. And this thing is six meters long from nose to tail. That's quite big. This fella also, he, he's, he's quite an enthusiast, clearly. He, he broke the Guinness World Record for the number of life-size um, Lego sculptures. And he, he has built 11 uh, life-size superhero characters out of lego they look incredibly good we'll put the link on the website um he's got aquaman the flash green lantern wonder woman etc etc all life-size made out of lego and incredibly detailed um there are people who try to break the world record for the quickest build of a particular set yes um i guess it's good content for youtube and, and tiktok and stuff. well yes absolutely yeah um there's a, a lego set of the uh the, the ship titanic um, I don't know if it comes with an iceberg or not, but there was a 15-year-old fellow called Sebastian Horworth who built the, the Lego Titanic ship in just, just, 8 hours, 42 minutes and 12 seconds. Wow. I don't know how long it would take everyone else. I but know how long it would take me. A very long time. <laughs> <laughs> There's um one Lego set, which is a map of the world, and this is the largest official lego set it contains 11,695 pieces wow the map turns out to be 65 centimeters high by 104 centimeters wide and it comes with an audio guide <laughs> um so there are people who just spend an awful lot of time have a, a massive amount of passion presumably quite a a sizable spare budget i guess because the stuff ain't cheap um but yeah some of the, some of the fans are um quite impressive And you've just mentioned a world made from Lego. Yes. There is actually a place, which is a land made from Lego. They should have called it Lego Land. They should, shouldn't, shouldn't they? they? <laughs> <laughs> have you been? I have not been. So I, I have been to Lego Land um, under the guise of going with my son. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I would very easily go on my own. It's a wonderful place. Um, Lego Land. The first Lego Land was created in in billund in denmark okay where the lego hq is based uh, and this was built in 1968 um not until 1996 did it come to the uk uh lego land in in windsor quite quite close to me mm -hmm. um on the grounds of the old windsor safari park and um it's a fascinating place if you if if one hates Lego, there is zero point in going there. Um, but there are rides, there are activities, there are sculptures dotted around all made out of Lego. It's a wonderful place. And at the heart of it, my favourite part of it, is called Miniland. Oh, right. And um, it's, it's a lot of scale models of different landmarks from around the world made entirely out of Lego. So there's a Lego... London, there's a Lego San Francisco, there's a Lego Times Square, there's you know, all of these things. Wow. And when I say their scale, I mean, the, the Canary Wharf building is 5.2 metres tall. <laughs> um, so they're quite big. Yeah. And you can walk around and look at this, this miniature world in Lego with all the information on, on little plaques telling you the history of, of those places. It's a, a fantastic place. How educational. Um, it's, it's gone from being my son's most favourite part of Legoland to being the most boring part of Legoland because now <laughs> he just wants to go on the, the roller coaster and things. But I love walking around Miniland. I'm assuming his favourite part is the gift shop. Well, yes, there is that. We, we try to avoid that because it's, um, as I've mentioned before, it ain't cheap. <laughs> <It's> cheap. <laughs> um, but the, the Miniland, at least the one in, in Legoland Windsor, is uh, comprised of 40 million Lego bricks. Wow. And um, a team of 100 builders were employed, uh, working full time to build Miniland and the various other Lego sculptures that exist in Legoland. And they have a team of people on site to repair it when it you know gets broken. Uh -huh. They 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 cheat a little bit. They put it together with glue <laughs> <laughs> so that it's permanent. Yeah, but yes, it's a, it's a wonderful place. I mean, the only things I, the only large things that I'm interested in that are built of Lego are cars. Okay. I've seen life-size uh, models of Lamborghinis and Teslas and all sorts of cars, which are made purely from Lego. They are amazing to look. I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes 
They are quite something, these these modern cars made from Lego. I think I've seen one in Mercedes-Benz world, right next to Brooklyn's museum. Quite possibly, yes. Ah, that's um, that's a, a labour of love, isn't it? <laughs> well, yes, yeah, so if you're a car nerd. <laughs> a car nerd and a Lego nerd. And a Lego nerd. It's not it's work the, at all, is it's it? It's the perfect Venn diagram. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is all the information that I have to offer on Lego. I'm sure there's much more, but uh, that's all I have. That's all I have too. How convenient. So thank you very much for spending this time listening to us. We do appreciate it. I mean, we'd, frankly, we would do this if you weren't listening. But. <laughs> but it's far more fun with you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's nice to share. It is indeed. So, I mean, we're sharing it with you. You can share it with your nerdy friends. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets better educated. Yes, so thank you for joining us on another fun-filled episode of Factorally. Factorally. And goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.